Hi, welcome to the shop. Today, well, we're going to be doing something that's been getting on my nerves for a while now, and that is repairing this telescopic tripod that I use when I travel. It has three telescopic legs and it folds up to something quite small and easy to carry around. However, there is a downside to it, and that is that I am a fairly big guy, and well, this height of tripod here really doesn't work for me. So what I did was I added on this extension. That's fine, but it makes it a little difficult to work with and especially difficult to cart around because it makes for a long tripod to put in my camera bag. And other problem is this end here, which I've brought up from the bottom to here. It's a little difficult to use on the cheap side of things and, well, it's broken. Now, I repaired it quickly during my last trip, but it just won't hold very long still. So, I need to replace that. So, I've been looking around and, well, I came up with a quick and easy solution. And that is to replace the end that came with the tripod with one of these ball pivot heads that you can get for next to nothing. And that well is a good idea. And it mounts just on the end where the other head used to be. And that's great. That solves one problem. But this is still unruly and a little too long. So what am I going to do about that? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at now. First, well, we're going to start by cutting the shaft in two. Seems a little counterproductive because what I want is it to be as long as possible. But trust me, it'll work out. Let's start by cutting the shaft. So here's the tripod's legs. Uh, retracted and we can see that that's quite a manageable length but the problem as mentioned before is that the shaft that I've added on is just way too long so what I'm going to do is cut it yeah we've already said that but I'm going to cut it roughly in two from the tip of the pivot head to the bottom of the legs when retracted and then I'm going to be able to bring this part down beside this one and hold it in place somehow. How? Well, if one pivot head solved one problem, it stands to reason that two pivot heads could solve two. Now, not necessarily, that's why I said could, but in this case, it will. Now, what I want to do is cut it in two, surface the two surfaces that I've produced by cutting, drill and tap each surface to accept a quarter 20 screw.
my parts are drilled and tapped. Uh, but I don't know if you noticed, I didn't drill and tap them the same way. Well, almost the same way. This longer part here, it was drilled quite deep. It was tapped with a starter tap and then it was finished with a bottoming tap. Quarter 20 all the time because that's what I want. The shorter piece here was drilled, not quite as deep. It was tapped but with a starter tap only. And that means that there are several threads as you get to the bottom of the hole that aren't complete. And that means that when I screw this quarter 20 socket heads cap screw into it, it hits fairly soon after three turns, but it hits into a progressively smaller thread. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go jam this screw into the hole so that it's for all intents and purposes permanently installed or mounted. Then I'm going to come and cut the head off of the screw and clean up the end. And once that's done, well I'll have a threaded rod here that I'll be able to use to assemble my two ends together. So, here I have my two ends with the tapped quarter 20 thread and now with the stud on the tip of the other part. And that means that I could, if I wanted to, assemble this. And voila! I'm right back at square one because this is just as unruly as far as length goes as I had at the start doesn't resolve anything. And why did I get that second head? Well, I got the second head because I'll be able to use it as an intermediate height. So I can use this second pivot head and screw it onto here. No one said this was going to be exciting. And then I can mount the other end up here. Now, I would be able to use this as a shorter tripod without the end and as a slightly longer tripod because of this added length up here, which is fine, but it still doesn't resolve the problem of, just let me unscrew it here, the problem of what to do with this second length. It's always going to be in the way. Well, really the second head helps me out with that. I guess this would be the second one in that case. And I'm going to resolve my problem of this floating part by drilling and tapping a quarter 20 hole perpendicular to the axis of my small uh, shaft here. And I'm going to do it about three quarters of an inch from the base of this ball head. Let's take a look at that. Now, I could use a vise to hold my part, but I want to do things a little differently. So we're going to use here a V-block, actually a set of V-blocks. And for that, well, let's start by lining up this V-block with uh, the longitudinal axis using my dial indicator. Now, I don't want to spend two days lining up here, so I want to know where I'm moving. And to do that, I'm going to snug the back clamp and loosen the front one. And that way I'll have a pivot point about which I'm going to move and that will really simplify the alignment of this V-block.
there. So this block is set up and tightened down. Now, I want to set up a second one. I don't have to, but we're going to do it just as an example. And it will be practical to stabilize the part that I'm going to be holding. But I'm not going to go through all the trouble of lining this one up equal to this one. That's just very difficult because not only do I got to have it parallel to the axis of the table, but it also has to be aligned with this one. And that's difficult to do unless you use a guide. And for that, we're going to use something long, rigid, and very accurate. In this case, I'm going to use this pin to help me with the alignment. Now, the difference here is that this block is set up with my two clamps, but both clamps are loose here. And I'm going to get this pin to help align this one with this one, centering it at the same time. A half thousandths of an inch. More than good enough. So what I want to do here is position the axis of my spindle over the center axis of the shaft. Now, as you can see, we didn't really need that second V-block, but it was nice to learn how to align both of them. Now, what we're going to do here is just one of several techniques for edge finding this part. And we're going to use a dial indicator to come and swipe both sides. Now, this edge and this edge, if they read zero, well, it's because I'm on the center. But you have to be careful of several things. Make sure that you're on the same turn of the indicator. And for that, when you're swiping, just barely touch the part. Really, five or ten thou is all you need. Next, we have to make sure that we're at zero in the same rotation. So every time we touch off, we're going to turn here to ensure that we're on the highest spot of the indicator and not somewhere on the sides, which will always give me a different reading. And the third thing, well, obviously, is going to be that I have to check end to side to side on the height center line here. And that's what we're going to find first. So we're going to Come up to the part here, not touching it, go a little bit at an angle, it doesn't have to be right on here. I'm just going to press in to get a slight contact and I'm going to come up, come down, right there, lock my spindle, there. The spindle is locked and I'm at the zero height here. So that is set. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now what I want to do is check side to side. I'm going to give myself a little more clearance here so I'm not quite touching. As you can see I touch a little bit there and a little bit there. So that's about the middle but for now that's all I have to do. And I'm going to come and see visually if I'm close on the other side. So I back off, turn around, come back on, 
and I'm just going to pivot a little bit and see. Okay, there and there. Now you may think that I have eyes in the back of the machine, and I do, because right here I have a mirror, and this mirror will stop me from having to bend over all the time and hitting my head on machine components because I can see my indicator quite clearly there. So I'm close. What I'm going to do is come back to this side so that it's easier for you guys to see. Come back here and I'm going to push in a little bit to get some contact here. And I'm going to turn. You see it goes up comes down, goes up, comes down. Right where its lowest point or the highest point is there, I'm going to set that to zero. Okay, so that is my high spot here. You can see it always comes back to zero. That's my high spot. And now I want to check the other side and see the difference. I'm going to come over to here, turn roughly 180. Come back on and check this out to find my spot right there. So I'm just under 5 thou out here. Now I'm checking side to side and I have about 4 thousandths. So that means that I want to come back here by about 2 thousandths. So what I'll do here, I can see it in my mirror there. I'm going to just come back approximately halfway. So that was about 2,000. You couldn't see that movement, but it was there. So I'm going to come back here, turn it back to this side, ramp on again, check for my high spot. There it is. You can see I'm about one and a half thou more than before. I'm going to put it back on zero, come back here, turn it about 180 degrees, Ramp back on, find my high spot, half a thou, and there. Now I'm not going to move anything, I'm just going to come back to make sure that I have zero on both sides. There's my zero. So I'm zero, zero. I'm right on the center axis, and now I can come and spot and drill my hole. So here I have my full length tripod. Uh, for a guy my size this is really practical. Now the legs are retractable so if I retract them I can then use this tripod with its extensions as a medium height tripod. If I want a shorter tripod well I can remove the longer of two, the both extensions. And I have a short tabletop tripod. But I'm still stuck with this part that's left over. And that's why I drilled and tapped that last quarter 20 thread. So that I can screw this into the side and bend that down. It's part of the tripod it clears the base and I can't lose it because it's all assembled. And when I travel, well, I can close up these legs and with this Velcro strap, just 
pulled it all into one part, one piece here, quite small and compact that I can easily carry in my camera bag. So there you go. They said I was crazy. They said it couldn't be done. But who's laughing now, eh? Who's laughing now? Well, I don't really know. Uh, there's no one else here. So, have fun. Be safe. And happy machining.